What are you doing for sound out there? I mean, especially it's so windy. What did you find to be the best yeah. for capturing clean audio? It's, it's windy. And you can get these things called sound blimps that will go over your shotguns that have massive protection that will do an amazing job. The problem is you're on a boom pole, you're recording to a recorder. We, we actually rented a whole sound devices system, the 744 recording system. We actually had like a wireless setup so our camera could be independent from the boom. Um, it ultimately, like the stuff that we shot with that full sound rig uh, didn't get used as much as the stuff that was just off camera, was on the little cameras because you know, it's, it's the difference between I'm here with my camera and I'm documenting my experience and I'm one and I'm just roaming compared with it's sort of set up, we have the boom out, we have the sound recording, we know what we're doing, it's planned. And so we found that just, you know, people doing whatever out there ended up being the best thing. And it's tough. In the edit, we just had, you know, this, you know, just clips your, your audio because of, of the wind. And that was tough to edit around. Um, there's a couple moments in the film where you get to experience that full wind thing, but not that much because it's really hard to listen to. So, so you felt that it really tainted um, the reaction of people to see this full film crew versus somebody with just their generic phone, and it was much more organic. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I mean, um, when you have a bigger camera, there's sort of a self-conscious things that happen. People are aware. And all of a sudden, if people are aware, then it's sort of like bringing you out of what's real. And so our, our film, what ended up in the final cut is real. It's like this multi-perspective thing of like what really happened. And, you know, there are these amazing shots with the red cameras that you know, are, on, are on tripods, getting good sound. You know, it's just, it's a lot of effort to, to go through with all that. And probably two people were really hamming it up for the camera too there's you get two extremes right yeah you get you get people that don't want to be on camera and that's the thing at burning man everyone has their own rights and so you have to ask permission and you have to make sure the people know that you're there and know that you're shooting and you know some of the shoots that we did we had hundreds of people that were all involved in our shoots we had this amazing art for the sky project where you know hundreds of people all made a giant tree and we did this uh, Redwood Resurrection project where this huge tree that was made out of people, you know, fell down and came back up and we had this big dance. Um, and that was, you know, something we had planned and shot and this whole thing. Um, you know, and other things out there that are equally as profound, but you're just on your handheld camera and you're just talking to the camera, like saying what's up and sharing your experience.